So how many of you have been to a high school prom? Or like a spring formal or something like that? Most of you. So now tell me, was it the wonderful romantic event that you expected it to be? No. You daydreamed about it for months in advance, right? It was going to be the defining event of your life. Right? And you were going to be so good looking. You were going to be the best looking couple. And whoever your date was, whoever he was, whoever she was, was going to be perfect. Right? You didn't know who they were necessarily. Or maybe you did. But they were going to do everything right. They were going to say everything right. They were going to be there for you. They would be so good looking. And when you stepped out of the limousine, it would be like going to the Oscars, right? And all the lights are on you and all the eyes are on you because you're the only ones there who actually went out and rent tuxes and bought dresses and had your hair done. So then the big evening comes and you, you, you spend a ton of money either renting a limo and renting a tux or buying a dress and having your hair done. And then your hair isn't done quite the way you want. Or Ms. Wonderful says something stupid in the first five minutes. And little by little, this wonderful romantic evening starts to kind of crumble a little bit. And by halfway through, says, I'm going to have a romantic night, but you're a jerk because you said that. <laughs> this was going to be the best night of my life, and I spent $500 for a romance. <laughs> then usually, and this is especially true at high school proms, you got to stay out all night, right? Just leaving at the end of the dance isn't enough. you got to stay out all night. And then usually, some kind of discussion comes, out about, uh, comes up about sexuality. As in, well, we've got to do it. It's prom night. I knew one girl who had been saying no very consistently to this guy for six months. And on prom night, suddenly he's very surprised. What do you mean? It's prom night. What do you mean you're saying no? It's prom night. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I forgot. It's prom night. Oh. I won't get pregnant, it's prom night. Oh, you're right, I, I forgot. All bacteria is rendered harmless on prom night. I'm sorry. You know, you're right. Oh, that's just, you know, a lot of people say yes on prom night. A lot of people say yes on other nights. I would imagine there are some people in this room who have said yes at one point or another. And the question comes down to, to why. What motivates us to say no? What motivates us to say yes? A lot of, I work with a whole lot of teenagers, a whole lot of high school students, college students all over the country. And we talk a lot about what reasons. And one of the first reasons you hear, usually from women, is that, well, I just decided I was ready for sex. Or we just decided we were ready. See, we kind of grew up, we're growing up in a generation that doesn't help us a lot make these decisions. So we're stuck with things like, well, I just feel ready. And teenage girls on TV and in real life always agonize over, am I ready? Do I feel ready? Do I not feel ready? Do you ever hear this? All my friends were, I, I just don't know if I'm ready, but I think we're ready. Guys don't do this. Guys turn about 14 and they say, ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I don't think they're in the locker room saying, well, gee, you know, I just don't know if I'm ready. Yeah, their decision making operates just on a little different plane. I debated a sexologist on a TV show called AM San Francisco. I swear to you, this woman was a sexologist. She had her PhD in sexology. She did. I'm not, I'm not making this up. Her big thing was encountering your sensation of readiness. She says that sexual activity is OK as soon as you've, as you've encountered your sensation of readiness. And I said, what is this sensation of readiness? She said, well, it's kind of like the feeling you get when you can dive off the high dive and not climb back down the ladder. And I said, <laughs> This is really helpful advice for teenagers. Well, I'm trying to decide if sexual activity is okay for me or not. What should I do? Well, gee, how do you feel on diving boards? You know? This is the kind of advice we get. I mean, what is this? Like, say you feel really, really ready to dive off the diving board. You've encountered your sensation of diving readiness, right? And you get up there, and you arc, and you dive, and you're flying through the air, and you look good, and you know it. And there's no water in the pool. What's going to happen? you die. It doesn't matter how ready you felt, because your feelings are in here, but the consequences are out there. I realized that the same was true with a lot of girls who said they were ready, or guys who said they were ready. And then they go to a doctor six months later with a sexually transmitted disease, or they're pregnant, and the doctor doesn't say, uh-uh, 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 
you had a sexual relationship before you felt ready. If you had felt ready, this never would have happened. So ready never really struck me as the greatest way to make this decision. Now, I think a vast majority of the people, unmarried people, not just teenagers, unmarried people who say yes to sexual activity are doing so because they're looking for love. Male and female, I really believe this. Because we we're all looking for love, because love is a need. Sex is not a need. Although your prom date may have not been willing to concede that. Oh, no, no, really, I need it, I need it. Sex is not a need, but love is. We die without love. We need love to thrive. And this strikes me as a world that doesn't offer a whole lot of love. This strikes me as a world that has a whole lot of sex, but not always a whole lot of love. And we're lonely. And especially sometimes now at college age. Because, you know, you leave your family, and you go out in the world, and you're here in a loving environment, but the world isn't always a loving place, and we step out, you step out a little further into the world, ooh. We need love. And it's easy when we're not feeling like we're getting love in our lives to look for love in sex, because sex feels like love. You've got arms around you, you've got somebody close to you, you've got somebody saying really nice things to you, and we want to believe it's love. We want to believe it's real love. We want to believe that they're going to be there for us, that they're going to be there because they care about us, because they want what's best for us, because they're looking out for us, because they're committed to us. Does it work that way? No, eh, we've got to take a little closer look. You've got to start kind of by asking a little more basic question. What's love? What does love mean? What does the word mean? Now, it's easy to have a problem with this. It's easy, easy to have somebody saying to you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Please say you love me, I please say you love me. And you end up saying something like, I love you. And thinking in the back of your mind, I'm a Christian, I love everyone, you know. <laughs> Bless you, my son. It's like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> What is love? What does it mean? People use the word a lot of different ways. They throw the word around a lot of different ways. Love. I love my mom and dad. I love pizza. I mean, what am I saying? What am I saying when I say I love my mom and dad? I'm saying I care about them. I'm saying I talk to them frequently. I'm saying I want what's best for them. I'm saying if they needed money, I would get it to them. If they needed me to be there, I would do anything to be there for them. What am I saying when I say I love pizza? Am I saying I have a relationship with pizza? Am I saying I care deeply for pizza? Am I saying that if pizza had a problem, I would be there for pizza? You know, what, not enough pepperoni? Oh, I'm on my way. No. When I say I love pizza, what I'm saying is that I eat pizza until I don't want to eat pizza anymore. And when I don't want to eat pizza anymore, I don't care what happens to the rest of the pizza. I'll throw it away. I'll feed it to the dog. I'll stick it in the back of the fridge until it gets all green and moldy and gross. I don't care. Well, you know, next time somebody says, I love you, look very deeply in their eyes and say, would that be pizza love? Because there's a real difference. You don't want to be loved with pizza love. 